I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode 19 of Ask Dave. Five years ago, I wrote a blog post on my primary website, dkassler.com, about how much it costs to become a ham. To this day, it remains one of my most popular pages. So let's spend some time together on the topic, updating information from five years ago. I really look forward to your comments on this because I'm going to make some specific recommendations. Now, the fundamental answer to the question on how much ham radio costs is that you can spend anything you want from not very much money to quite a bit. I'm going to outline some station options for several scenarios. We'll focus on the technician license in this video. Mind you, you'll do things differently, but it's nice to have a reference point. First, let's look at the preparation it takes to become a ham. My avowed goal is to help you become a ham who actually gets on the air in a way you'll find satisfying and productive. So, I specifically warn you away from sites that merely drill you in the answers to the test questions. I don't like these because although they may net you a license, they don't help you to become an active ham. A couple years ago, Jason Tans, writing in Wired magazine about standardized testing, provided this wisdom. The best way to prepare for a test might be to master the material it purports to cover rather than amassing a series of tricks and hacks around the act of test taking. Good advice. So this is why I recommend the ARRL study manuals. They approach the material in a systematic manner with lots of additional information you can refer back to after you get your license. That is why I shaped my training videos to follow the outline of these books. My training videos provide even more background that's relevant too, but independent of the individual test questions. So, here's my first recommendation, the ARRL license manual for ham radio. You can get it on Amazon for less money than on the ARRL website, plus shipping on Amazon is less expensive too. Be sure to get the current version. For use prior to June 30th, 2018, you'll be looking for the third edition. Let's see. Let's buy the spiral bound version because it lies flat. That's $30 plus $5 shipping and another buck for tax. That's $36. Now, I'm going to make an important suggestion here. There's simply no better source of quality information about ham radio than QST, the magazine of the American Radio Relay League. That's right, I'm advocating joining the league even before you get your license. You'll be amazed at how much knowledge you'll pick up just by browsing the articles. The magazine always has material for all levels of expertise, including beginners. And the magazine has lots of ads that can help answer your questions about what radio to get after, and I underline after you get your license. The membership for those in the USA is $49 a year. I know that may seem steep for a mere magazine, but QST is no mere magazine and the ARRL is no ordinary organization. Let's round that to $50 to count the postage and the cost of the envelope and add it to our tally, which gets us to $86. Here's something that may help you most of all. Join a local amateur radio club. The level of collective expertise is often high. Now, you may need to do a little club shopping to find the right one for you, but don't wait until you have your license to get integrated into the club. Our local club, the Montrose Amateur Radio Club, has annual dues of $20. Let's add $30 to our list to get started. So we're now at $116. The next step, of course, is the exam itself. You'll need to pay the fee to the volunteer examiners. That's running about $15 these days, give or take. 
So now we're up to $131. You'll know you passed the exam within minutes. The examiners will grade your test and give you a Certificate of Successful Completion of Examination. A bit of government speak if there ever were one. Now you can go get that equipment and you can get on the air as soon as you see your call sign show up on the FCC database. Okay, here's the big problem. People get a license, then get a cheap little radio, can't find anybody to talk with, and give up. How do you avoid this? The best way, bar none, is to be involved in a club that suits your interests. Most clubs welcome newcomers of all ages and experience levels. If yours doesn't, then shop for another club. But the key here is that with your technician license, you'll probably be talking with people you already know. Many clubs have weekly nets where everyone gets on the air to comment and maybe brag a little bit. This is a great way to get used to your radio and overcome any residual mic fright. So let's look at equipment. I suggest you start with a single or dual band handheld radio. There are several inexpensive Chinese radios, but these are hard to program and aren't set up to already know the American band plan for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. They might make excellent second or third radios, but for now, let me steer you in the direction of a simple, solid handheld radio from one of four companies, Alenco, Icom, Kenwood, or Yesu. I've had radios from each of these manufacturers, and they're all great. I really recommend starting with something basic. Bells and whistles seem really cool, but actually get in the way while you're trying to get your feet on the ground. And I recommend new gear for a new ham. There's no point in dealing with someone else's problems at this point in your ham career. Plus, if the radio is new, you have the manufacturer's warranty. Here are some choices. From Malenko, the DJ500T, listing for around $130 and sometimes on sale for less. From ICOM, look at the ICOM ICV80HD35, which is a single band radio going for around $200. I don't recommend the sport version, by the way, which doesn't have a rechargeable battery. Right now, Kenwood's choices are limited, but they do have the THK20A single band 2 meter radio for $135. Yesu has some good choices, such as the VX3R, which goes for $140, and the FT60R for $150. You may want to accessorize your radio, but let's do that later. You don't need to do it now. So, let's pick the FT60R for $150 and add $20 for shipping and tax and mark up $170 on our chart, bringing us to $301. One of the first things you're going to want to do is extend the range. The easiest way is in the car with a magnet mount dual band antenna such as the MFJ 1724B for $25 plus shipping, let's say $35 total. The antenna comes with a cable, but there's an issue. The antenna is actually designed for a mobile rig, so it has a PL259 cable connector which your handheld won't have. So you'll need to add the appropriate adapter for maybe $10. So we'll add the $35 and $10 to our chart, getting up to $346. How about an antenna to put up outside your home? Here's a simple one, the MFJ1740 for $30, say $45 with shipping and taxes. But now we need some accessories. You'll need some sort of a mast you can get an inexpensive aluminum pole. You can simply connect this to your antenna and then slip that pole down a vent pipe and it will stay in place on your roof just fine. Home Depot has an $11 pole that you'll probably want to pick up at your local store. 
Just about anything will do here as long as it's more than a couple feet long. Now, you'll want to run some wire from the grounded part of the antenna and the mast to an actual ground. So let's just go ahead and invest in a ground rod. You can get one for less than $15 at Home Depot. There's a special clamp you need for another few bucks. Back to the wire. You can use something simple here as all it will do is bleed off static charges so they don't blow out the front end of your radio. Let's set aside $40 for this because copper is somewhat expensive right now. Okay, so we're up to $462. Oh, but wait, the coax. I'm going to specify a pre-made coax assembly here because fewer and fewer people are soldering their own connectors. And be liberal with the length. You'll need probably double what you may think at first. So let's pick a 75-foot RG8X cable from ABR Industries for about $50 from Ham Radio Outlet. Yes, I know this is a bit lossy at VHF and UHF, but the fact that you're dealing with an outside antenna will more than make up for it. Oh, and you can use the same coax adapter you used in the car. Let's look at our chart, which is now at $512. At this point, you can operate with a nice handheld radio with its own antenna or in your car or from your home. Okay, let's take the next big logical step, a VHF UHF mobile radio. These can be used both at home and in the car. Again, I recommend relatively simple radios. And there are lots of options but I'll specify a radio here for the sake of an example. The Yaesu FT7900 is a great, simple, dual-band rig that packs a good solid 50 watts on 2 meters and 40 watts on 70 centimeters. Believe me, that's way more than enough power on those two bands. This radio sells for about $280. Let's add $20 for shipping and taxes. Some hams stop here. A handheld plus a mobile rig in the car. We're at $812. But there is another logical step. You can use that same model mobile rig or one similar to it in your home station. Now, you'll need a 13.8 volt power supply. MFJ has a number of options and for, oh, let's put aside $120, you can have a nice one that will also serve well for your HF station after you get your general license. So what are we up to now? In the neighborhood of $1,200. Many techs stop right here with a mobile rig in the car and in the home. This station setup lets you participate fully in what's happening in your community. You can hit repeaters from both your car and home. You can participate in emergency communications. So let's stop here and call this a baseline for the fully equipped tech. You can go more, of course, by getting radios with additional features, particularly digital, or fancier antennas and so on. I do not recommend VHF UHF amplifiers because if you can't work them with 50 watts to an external antenna, you probably won't work them with 500 watts either. That's just how FM and line of sight work. Next time we'll talk about setting up your general station with some specific rig and antenna recommendations. In the meantime, get on the air get to know people, and get involved in the amateur radio community. As always, for an Ask Dave episode, we end with a photo of a local attraction here in southwestern Colorado. Our picture today is again of the Durango-Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad, once again of engine 482. The train is just leaving Silverton for the trip down the Animas Canyon to Durango. Steam engines were marvels in their day, now replaced by much more modern technology. In a way, amateur radio is like that steam locomotive. On the one hand, there's newer and more flashy technology. On the other hand, there's something authentic, even visceral, about that steam engine. 
Some other old technologies are making comebacks too. Retro, you might call it. Vinyl records are reappearing because of their authentic sound. Amateur radio is just as authentic. No fancy banks of computers or countless miles of fiber optics are needed. Just two people, each with a radio, talking to each other without anything or anyone intervening. Pretty cool, really. I hope this enumeration of costs helps you better understand amateur radio. Ham radio is certainly not the most expensive hobby out there, although there are lots of opportunities for upgrades and expansions. But a few hundred dollars gets a technician on the air reliably. It's not the equipment that matters. It's the people you meet, both on the air and in person. I appreciate your feedback and questions. Please subscribe to this channel to get notification of future videos. You can submit a question by commenting on this video or by visiting dkastler.com slash ask hyphen Dave. Keep those questions coming. Until we next meet, 73.